everyone, happy Monday and welcome back to another practice on my channel. My name is Daria if you're new and today's practice is a lot of tricky little crow transitions. So we'll be practicing the transition from crow pose back into chaturanga, whether you're stepping back or jumping back. All of it's available, so move at your own pace. All that you'll need today is yourself and somewhere to move and whenever you're ready, let's get into it. We'll begin today in Supta Baddha Konasana. So come all the way down to lie on your back. Bring the soles of your feet together to touch and then let your knees fall open wide. Options for your arms are to extend them out to a wide T or bring one hand to your low belly and one up to your heart. And close your eyes. And right away begin to find more softness all over. You can imagine that your bones and your muscles are weighted and really surrendering into gravity so that it's like you're being pulled or magnetized right to the center of the earth. Begin to connect with your breath. If your hands are on your chest and your belly, you can feel the breath as it swells into the low belly through the ribs, all the way up into the high chest. Take a big open mouth sigh to release and clear and drop. As you continue to deepen your breath, allow your outer hips, your inner thighs to disengage so that your knees can totally flop open out to the sides. Begin to notice if there's any tight spaces or places in your body that are communicating loudly right away. Send your breath there and find a bit more release, a bit more softness. And begin to blink your eyes gently open. Close your knees together. You can use your hands at the sides of your thighs if that helps. And then begin to rock and roll the length of your spine, rolling all the way up to sit and then back. And let this feel really good, like a massage along the sides of your spine. And a couple times at your own pace. And then when you're ready, we'll come up to hover here at the top. You can ground your toes just for a second, bring your hands right behind your thighs, and then lean back until you feel your core begin to engage. Staple your belly button towards your spine. Keep the collarbones pulling away from each other so your chest stays proud and broad. Then begin to float your toes an inch or so away from the mat, or bring them up in line with your knees or bring the legs all the way to straight for an avasana boat pose. Option to keep your arms behind your hamstrings or reach forward through your fingertips, palms face up toward the sky. Squeeze your inner ankle bones together and breathe with a steady point to focus your gaze. And begin to cross at your ankles. Plant your palms down and make your way to all fours, hands and knees for tabletop position. We'll move through a few rounds of cat cows. You can go at your own pace. So it might feel really nice to ripple through the motion really, really slowly. Exaggerate the swell forward of your heart and the spreading of your sitting bones as you inhale for cow. And then round and curl for cat. Press away from the earth, hollow your belly. Get your toenails involved and then drop your head at the bottom. Maybe you'd like to go a bit more energetically today, moving with a bit more pace. And just go from what you're feeling, any organic movement, bring it in now, maybe rolling through the hips or the rib cage or the pelvis or whatever feels good. Don't focus on what you should be doing or how it might look. Just breathe inside out and let the movement be informed by the communication between breath and body. Two more rounds of breath right here. Inhale. 
Exhale. Last time, inhale all the way to the top. Exhale, let every degree of air leave your body. Find a neutral spine once again, and then stretch your left toes all the way to the back of your mat. Then pick them up so that your left leg floats in line with your hips. Bend your left knee, flex your left foot so that the sole of your foot stamps up toward the sky. Then begin to tent up onto your right fingertips and as you do this, shift more weight into your left palm and really root firmly into all five fingertips. Begin to reach forward through your right fingertips and then carry your arm out around to the side and all the way back to reach for the top of your left foot. Grab it from the inside. And once you make contact, begin to kick with strength, with energy into your left hand. And curl your heart forward. Lift your gaze as much as you lift your left toes. Engage your left glutes. And then exhale, slowly release back to tabletop. And now the right toes step back behind you. Right leg comes up to hover. And bend your right knee, right foot stamps up toward the sky. Ground more into your right palm. Hug, magnetize your right palm and your left knee toward each other. Press into your left toenails as you tent up onto your left fingertips. Once you've found a solid and stable foundation here, reach forward through your left fingertips and then begin to carry them around to the side and all the way back to grab for the top of your right foot. Flex your right toes into your left hand. Begin to stretch through the front line of your body. Activate your right glutes. Keep your right knee pointing down toward the earth to square your hips and grow up through your gaze and your right toes equally. On an exhale, release everything back down to tabletop. Tuck your toes behind you, root your palms down and forward, pick up your knees to hover, and then glide your hips all the way up and back luxuriously to downward facing dog. Indulge, take your time as you transition. And once you arrive, you can shake your head, no, nod your head yes, let go of the back of your neck, pedal your feet, rock your hips side to side, anything you need to feel really, really good here. And pick up your heels, come up high onto the balls of your feet, and then melt your heels back closer to the earth. Maybe they hover or maybe they connect. Invite your heart to stretch closer towards your thighs as you roll your shoulder blades away from each other and hug your forearms toward the midline. Inhale, take your gaze to the top of your mat and exhale one foot at a time, step your way up to a ragdoll fold. Feet are hips distance apart, toes behind wrists, knees are generously bent. And today, let's bring our hands to interlace at the back of the skull. So this will encourage the back of your neck to release, encourage the crown of your head to be more weighted, heavier. And all of that weighted action toward the earth will allow the top of your spine and your shoulders to decompress and fall closer toward the earth. And as you breathe here for a few more rounds, you can take little sways side to side, play with shifting your weight on your feet, however you'd like, and allow the air that you're breathing in to fill up every little corner of space in your full body. And begin to sprinkle your fingertips back down to the earth in front of your toes. Take an inhale for a halfway lift. Grow from the core of your pelvis out through the crown of your head. Really stretch out your spine. And then exhale, fold again. And keep your feet hips distance apart if you like, or you can draw the feet together to touch. 
Inhale, reverse swan dive. Rise to stand all the way up to Tadasana. Feel your big toes, your pinky toes, and your heels pressing into the mat. Charge your quads. Grow your fingertips up high. Spin your palms to face toward each other and then soften your shoulders down away from your ears. Inhale here one more time to root down and rise up. Then as you exhale, cactus your elbows. Puff up your heart, grow super long, and then from that length, carry yourself back into a little mini back bend. Inhale, rise up to stand, Tadasana. Exhale, swan dive down, forward fold, butt goes back, heart goes forward. Inhale for halfway lift, elongate in two directions. Now exhale, root your palms down to the earth. Pick up your heels so your toes come really high. Then spread your feet hips distance apart and bend your knees a lot. Connect your knees to the very, very tops of your triceps or maybe up into your armpits as high as you can get them. And then begin to shift the weight forward, bending your elbows and squeezing them together, magnetizing the midline. Play with shifting more weight into your fingertips. Maybe pick up one foot and then the other. And we hover and crow, hold here, squeeze your heels in closer to your butt for three, for two, core is engaged, for one. Now, you can either step back to your high plank and flow for chaturanga, or if you feel ready for it, go ahead and float back, bending your elbows as you land. Inhale, upward facing dog, press away from the earth, swell your heart, lift your thighs. Exhale to glide back, downward facing dog. Good. And we'll just play with a few more rounds of sun A, but adding the crow transition. So stay where you are. You can step back, you can jump back. Maybe your feet are floating in crow, or maybe you're just playing with lifting one set of toes up away and then the other. And wherever you are, be there. Take an inhale, take your gaze forward. Exhale, step, or if you'd like, float to the top of your space and fold. Inhale, halfway lift, stretch out your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to stand. Tadasana, flat back as you rise, feet deeply rooted. Exhale, little back bend, open your heart. Shoulder blades draw together. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, dive down, fold. One more time, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, palms come down, come up high onto your toes. You can readjust your feet if you need. Move into crow, whatever option that you're taking and stay for three, for two, so strong, for one. Exhale, chaturanga. Upward facing dog is your inhale breath. Downward facing dog is your exhale breath. One more round, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step or float, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, mountain, reach your fingertips out and up. Exhale, back bend, go as deep or as subtle as you like. Inhale to rise. Exhale, dive all the way down. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, palms root down. Pick up your heels high onto the balls of your toes. Bend your elbows and your knees a lot. Shift your weight more forward. Engage your core, hollow your belly. Elbows hug the midline for three, for two. Steady gaze about a foot in front of your hands for one. Step or float back, Chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale, good. At the same time and in the same way, sink both of your knees gently down to the mat. Shift your hips back to sit on your heels. Bring your palms to face up on your thighs. Close your eyes. Take a big full inhale into your full body. Open mouth, exhale, sigh, release, let all of that go. And try to shift away from the past as quickly as possible, letting go of anything that just happened, whatever your experience was, let it be what it was without examining it any farther, just let it go. And 
and begin to blink your eyes open. And plant your palms, tuck your toes, glide your way back downward facing dog. As you inhale, begin to shift more weight into your left toes so that you don't need your right foot anymore and you can reach it up high for three-legged down dog. Then stack your hip and bend your right knee. And take some knee circles, opening up, mobilizing the right hip joint. A few in each direction. Like you're drawing circles on the wall with your right knee. And then as you inhale, lift up your right leg from the inner thigh, spin your right pinky toe down to face the mat, hips square. Exhale, hollow your belly, draw your right knee into your chest, and then as softly as possible, step your right foot down beside your right thumb. Inhale right away, rise up for high lunge, fingertips reach up overhead, both big toe mounds rooted deeply. See if you can slightly tuck your tailbone towards your pubic bone and then pull up through your waist and your heart. Notice that this subtle shift of your pelvis forward activates more of a stretch into the front of your left hip. One more inhale here. Exhale, release your left palm down to the inside of your right foot. Reach up with your right fingertips. Take your gaze up with your left eye. Begin to glide more weight into your back body. Cactus your right elbow and open your heart up toward the sky. Spin your left rib cage towards your right rib cage. And then as you exhale, shift all the way around to pyramid. Draw your right leg a little more to straight. You can readjust your stance. Spin your left toes out at 45 degrees and drop your left heel. Inhale here, ripple through your spine like a halfway lift. Reach forward through the crown of your head, traction fingertips back. And then as you exhale, cast your heart forward and down toward your right toes. Inhale, lift up onto the ball of your left foot and launch forward for standing L. Grow back through your left toes and forward through the crown of your head. And then as you exhale, step your left foot down, hips distance away from your right, folding from the hips. Pick up all 10 toes and glide your palms under your feet. So soles of feet and palms of hands connect. The top of your hands are rooted to the mat. And then drop just like a forward fold. You can bend your knees as much as you need and use your toes to wiggle and massage into your wrists. We've already done a lot of work with those crow transitions back. And so let this feel really good. Imagine that the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet are melding into one another and expanding all the time. Good, undo the grip or the, the stepping of your feet onto your hands. Root your palms, pick up your heels. We'll come again into our crow transition. Elbows squeeze together, engage through your core. Pick up your spine toward the sky. See how close you can draw your heels into your butt. And then when you're ready, energetically launch yourself backwards, stepping or jumping. Chaturanga, upward facing dog. Exhale, front body pulls toward back body, downward facing dog. Right toes root down as you inhale to sweep your left leg high, three-legged down dog. Stack the left hip, bend the left knee, take some circles. And then begin to reverse the direction that you're traveling. Now square your left hip bone down toward the earth. Kick back into your left heel, lift high onto your right toes, and then glide through, hollow your belly, knee pulls into your chest, heel as close to your butt as you step your left foot through and down. Inhale to rise up, high crescent lunge, fingertips float overhead, big toes dig down into the earth. Find a micro bend in your right knee, shift your pelvis forward, and then charge through your right quad as you deepen the bend into your left leg. On your next exhale, begin to plant your right palm down inside your left leg, your left foot. 
Lift your left fingertips up high, glide into your back body, and then cactus through your left elbow as you grow your heart toward the sky. Circle your left arm all the way back around to frame your left foot. Pick up your hips, draw your left leg more towards straight as your right toes turn out toward the long edge of your mat. Inhale, roll your spine forward, stretch out each vertebra, and then exhale, fold into your pyramid shape. Inhale, pick up high onto the ball of your right foot, launch your way forward, standing L, left sole of your foot digs deeper into the mat as you stretch out through all the lines. On your exhale, right foot steps down, hips distance away from your left, and fold. An option again for Gorilla Pose Padahastasana, where you bring the palms of your hands under the soles of your feet. If you'd rather take any other folding option, go for it. Check in again with the back of your neck, the back of your head. Make sure everything is dropping as much as possible. And begin to release your hands from beneath your feet. Last time we'll play with our crow transition. So palms are deeply rooted. Claw the mat with all 10 of your fingertips. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, then bend your elbows. Find a solid connection between your knees and your arms wherever they are. Hug your thumbs and index fingers toward each other and all of your fingers toward the center of your palms. Big inhale. On your exhale, transition back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. And sink both of your knees down to the earth and then shift to one side, sit on your hips. Sit all the way down. Bring the soles of your feet in front of you. Stretch your palms forward, spin them up to face toward the sky, and we'll roll all the way down to lie on our backs for five. For four, try to keep your big toes rooting. For three, shoulder blades hover for two, and one, release everything down. Now cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Flex your right toes toward your right shin, then pick up your left foot for supine figure four. You can thread your fingers together behind your left hamstring or maybe all the way through to the front of your left shin wherever you are today. Right elbow is available as leverage here if you'd like to gently press your right knee wider. And slow down your breath. Notice your heart's beating in your chest. And let the back of your head and the back of your heart and the back of your pelvis get heavier. If you'd like to close your eyes and feel a little more internally, go for it. And begin to drop your left foot back down softly to the earth. Open your arms out wide to a T and then cactus your elbows. Pick up your hips just about an inch or so away from the mat, shift them toward the right, and then drop your outer left hip and your right foot down to the earth. So staying in that figure four shape and now finding a twist. You can gaze over your right fingertips or your right elbow. And begin to infuse your breath with a sweeter, softer, easier quality. And begin to roll back to the midline. Undo your right ankle from your left leg and switch. So the left ankle now crosses over your right thigh. Flex your left toes, pick up your right foot, thread your fingertips through behind your right hamstring or maybe to the front of your right shin. And keep your 
both of your feet flexed actively, but not overly so. So avoiding any extra tension that we're introducing, but still staying protected in the knee joints. And for your last few exhales here, see if you can hug your right knee in a little closer to your chest as you soften through your outer left hip. And begin to release your right foot back down to the mat. Plant it there as you cactus your arms out to the sides. Then pick up your hips just slightly, shift them over toward the left and relax your outer right leg and your left foot down to the earth. And find the spot that's cozy for you and then take your gaze maybe all the way over toward the left. Notice the space where you feel the most sensation and imagine that you could breathe right from that place, right through the pores of your skin Allow your exhales to rinse away any residue, clear dust or cobwebs or anything that's stored in your body that you may no longer require. And roll all the way back. Release your legs. Drop both of your knees into your chest. You can roll around the base of your spine a few times, massage the low back. And we'll take happy baby to close our practice today. Send the soles of your feet up high. Reach with your hands for either the outsides or insides of your feet and then hug your knees in close towards your rib cage. And try to connect your tailbone down to the earth so you can play with your width of your stance, width of your feet, how close your heels are to your butt, all of these little adjustments can affect how much you're able to connect your full spine down to the earth. And play for a few moments here, maybe straightening one leg and then the other, or both at once. And if there's any final movements or postures that you are craving, that your body really wants today, go ahead and take them now. When you're ready, draw your knees in close to your chest. Lift up your shoulder blades, wrap your forearms around your shins, curl into the tightest possible ball, compress everything together. Inhale here. Exhale, expand, drop, relax. Shavasana corpse pose. Palms flip up, toes fall open. Imagine that you're lying on a sandy beach or the forest floor or someplace where you can totally sink into the earth beneath you. Feel the imprint that your body makes into gravity. And then progressively relax every muscle, every bit of engagement from the tips of your toes all the way up to your hip bones, your pelvis, your low belly and your chest, shoulders down to hands, from your throat all the way up to your third eye and the back of your head. Allow yourself to completely surrender here and bask in all of the effects of this practice.
And if you'd like to rest longer in Shavasana, follow that urge. Stay as long as you can, as long as you need, until your body calls you out. If you're ready to return to your day or your night, begin to breathe with more depth. And fill up your full body with new, fresh, bright air. And then allow it to spread down your arms, into your hands, down your legs, into your feet. And begin to bring small movements back, maybe to your fingertips, your toes. You can roll one ear down to the mat and then the other. Gently wake yourself back up. And then draw your ears and your arms closer together. Reach back through your fingertips and forward through your toes. Long body stretch. And let your exhale melt you into fetal pose. With as little effort as possible, bend your knees and roll to whichever side you want to go toward. Drop for one last moment everything down. And press into your palms and rise up. Keep your eyes closed or soften your gaze. Build yourself a spacious seat, root down through your sitting bones, and then pull up from your toes to the crown of your head. Draw your palms to meet in front of your heart, thumbs at your sternum. And inhale to breathe bright new energy through your whole system. Exhale to let go of any remaining debris. The last bits of residue fall off your shoulders back into the earth. And then draw your thumbs up to your third eye. And bow forward to seal your practice. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice and this space with me today. I hope that you found a little bit of playfulness and fun even in these tricky transitions. And remember that this is always a process. So each time that you practice this class, you might find some new discoveries and explore a bit more in these transitions. If you're not already, make sure to go down below and subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Monday and every Friday. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.